This is Netta Lina-Nasherdeen, CEO and founder of Rise It For You, and welcome to Rise It For You TV. Today, I'm really excited to talk with you a little bit about how to retain your top talent. So for those of you that are unfamiliar with Rise Up For You, we get the greatest honor of working with individuals around the world to support company culture, to support leadership, and to really help you and your team perform at your absolute best through teaching soft skills. So that's your emotional and social intelligence, your leadership, your communication, all the things that we think are common sense that unfortunately are just not common sense that really are a skill that we can build. So, you know, I usually, every time I do um, a session or I go live or we do a Rise It For You TV series, we usually just pull some of the challenges or the topics that we're hearing from our clients and that we're working with on a daily basis. And so something that many of us have been hearing for years now, it's, it's not a new challenge, but something that I wanna address is how do we get our team to have what we call staying power here at Rise Up For You? So staying power is the employee getting them to a place where they're loyal, where they're connected to the values and they're connected to the culture of the company so that they want to stay, they want to grow with you and they want to help you scale and, and really put your best foot forward as the company. So how do we do that? How do we make sure that we can retain our top talent so that we don't lose them and have to keep rehiring and have high turnover? So today I want to break down three steps for you that you may or may not have thought about. Now, if you are a leader or you're running a company, you're going to want to stay and watch this because I can almost guarantee that at least two out of the three things that I'm going to say haven't been top of mind for you. Or if you are an employee, I really encourage you to stay and watch because I'm always curious to hear from you as well. What do you need in order to have your leader or your team keep you? and retain you so you could put it in the comments you can send us private messages uh, but we want to hear from from both of you both the employer and the employee before we jump in just a little bit about us again if you're not familiar rise up for you we work with everything from fortune 500 companies down to local nonprofits. we're in over 50 countries with our programming and every single day we're training we're coaching we're working with leaders specifically to enhance the workplace with these leadership, emotional and social intelligence skills to create a culture that is productive, that is high performing and that is going to help you move the needle, but that also feels great. That also is full of development and fulfillment. And you're more than welcome to check us out at riseitforyou.com. Uh, every single week we release these TV episodes just providing value to you. So number one, uh, oftentimes when we hire, we can catch ourselves in two different situations. First situation is that you're scaling so fast, so you just need to get butts in the seats. You need to hire employees because you need more support. Um, and the second is maybe a team member leaves and you just got to fill that spot, right? Because maybe it's detrimental if you don't. Well, when we hire, oftentimes we can be in a, in a rushing mode. And so there's basic elements to hiring that we forget. And so we don't end up setting the team member up for success. How many of us have ever had an employee that before you even finish the onboarding process, they leave, right? Or maybe you went through the whole onboarding process. They've been with you for a week or two, and then they just stop showing up, right? What happened? What went wrong? Now, of course, we know that there's going to be certain situations that you just can't help, that you can't do anything about. But how can we put our best foot forward to minimize situations like that? So step number one is setting up your team member for success. What does that look like? First off, I want you to ask yourself, and I also want you to ask the new hire, do they know exactly what their job is? Can they repeat it back to you? so that you have full clarity and understanding that they have full clarity and understanding. How many times have you hired somebody and they still don't really know what they do? They know what their title is, but they don't know what it really means on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's gonna be really critical that you have them repeat back, even if they're an executive, what they believe their job is and what they believe they should be achieving and providing to the organization value-wise. We also want to make sure that they understand what success looks like. So more than just understanding what their job is, what would success look like in their role? What are their KPIs? What are the outcomes that you want to see from them in the next 90 days? Now, if your team member does not have that, 
that they're probably running around like a chicken with their head cut off, or they're probably not doing or providing the efficiency that you want because they don't really know where they're going. So first and foremost, we need to set up our team member for success. A couple more things. Who's their go-to person? If they do have a question and they do need support, who's the person that's gonna provide that for them? This is all a part of step one. And I even have one more point for you on step one, setting them up for success. What does their day look like? So I'm gonna hit the ground running on Monday. It's my first day of the job. Maybe it's my second day of the job. What does my day-to-day -day look like? What should I be doing on a daily basis? Where should I start? Should I start by opening up my email and answering those? Should I start by hitting this project with this team or this division? These things are gonna help set up your team for success. What we don't want is your new hire or team member to come into the company and already have stress or feel like they're not being taken care of. Because remember, we associate emotions with the job, right? So if I'm coming into a new company and I'm really excited to work for you, but then suddenly I feel stressed, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing, I feel like no one's really taking care of me and I haven't been set up for success, chances that that person is gonna start looking for another job are gonna be high because now they're feeling a certain emotion that's not the best around this job and the company. So before you hire the next person, make sure you know exactly what you want, exactly what they should be doing, exactly what success looks like for them, who the person is that they're gonna to report to, and be able to say on your first day, this is what should be happening on a day-to-day -day basis. This is what your day looks like. And if you don't know, then I would hire a consultant or do a ton of research before you hire the person. Meaning maybe it's the first time that you're hiring this role. You're not really sure what it looks like, but you know you just need it. Do as much research as possible so that you can set that team member up for success. That's number one of making sure we can have our team have staying power so that they stay with you. Step number two. Obviously, this is one of my favorite here at Rise Up For You, and that is growing your people, okay? So once somebody becomes a team member, it's still your job as an organization to create an engaging experience, an experience that makes the team member feel like they have somewhere to go, an experience that provides development and growth. Now, I know, you know, the workplace looks very different than it did 20, 30 years ago. Today in the workplace, your university, right? Uh, you're a counselor. There's there's all these different roles that you play as a company. It's no longer that the team member just comes to work, do their job, and then leave. Now, maybe some of you like that and you still want that, but that's just not the reality today. And if we want our employees to stay, then we do have to go above and beyond. But by the way, if you're an employee, that also means that you have to go above and beyond. This is always a handshake. So when a company puts their best foot forward, it's also really critical that you as the individual co contributor also put your best foot forward, right? Otherwise it's gonna fall apart. So how do we grow our people? You know, here at Rise Up For You, like I said, we coach and we train every single day on the soft skills, how to lead, how to communicate, how to have confidence, how to be the best that you can be and push your potential through soft skills. It's no longer just about the technical skills. Now, most companies do a great job of growing and developing their team when it comes to the actual technical skill or the job description. But very few companies are growing and developing their team when it comes to the people skills. And the reality is, is that the person is the professional and the professional is the person. So I always say you can have three PhDs, you can have all the knowledge in the world, you can be brilliant technically, you can be amazing at your job function, but if you don't have confidence, if you don't know how to communicate effectively, if you're not able to build relationships with stakeholders, if you're not able to lead and manage and influence and support the people that are around you, all that knowledge is at best maybe going to hit about 50%. So there's still so much opportunity for performance and for potential and for your company to grow with this individual. So we want to make sure that we're providing training and development from both sides, both the technical side and the personal and professional development side when it comes to the human skills. How does your team show up with confidence? How are they building relationships? What's the emotional and social intelligence? So some of you may or may not know that American businesses alone waste $1.2 trillion every single year because of 
or communication. 95% of leaders think they're self-aware, but only 10% actually are. And 83% of professionals, they say their number one challenge is self-confidence. Not, I want you to ask yourself, how would your organization be, or what would what would change positively if it wasn't 95% of leaders that thought they were self-aware, but maybe it was 25% of leaders that actually were self-aware or even 50%, or instead of only 83% struggling with self-confidence, what would happen if we brought that number down for your company? Would they communicate more effectively? Would they sell more? Would they be able to show up differently in a room? All of those things can change the performance, the productivity, and of course, the bottom line of your organization and company. So I'm sure you're all familiar with the statistic that says 76% of individuals are disengaged at work. Well, it's not only because they don't like their job or maybe they don't like their leader. That's the narrative we often hear. But a lot of times it's because maybe that individual doesn't have clarity. Maybe they don't have the tools to understand what their values are and what's in alignment for them. Maybe they don't have the tools to understand what creates fulfillment and then. And so you're hiring all these amazing people that are great technically, but that haven't figured themselves out on a personal level. Now you might say, Netta, that's not my job. But the harsh reality is, again, that the person is the professional and the professional is the person. And the more you can pour into the individual, the more you're going to benefit the overall organization, the mission, and of course, the profitability and scalability of a company. So that's step number two. And finally, step number three, the scary F word, right? The scary F word is that there needs to be a consistent plan to provide feedback for your team. Now, again, our team works with organizations all over the world, billion dollar companies down to local nonprofit organizations. And I would say that more than 50% of organizations that we work with or that we speak to do not have a consistent system for providing feedback and performance reviews. And the reality is, is that, you know, individuals, even though it can be tough sometimes, Research shows that when they receive consistent feedback and performance reviews, they're actually more engaged and they're more likely to have a loyalty to your organization because they know what they're doing well and they also know what they need to work on. And the truth is, even though it doesn't feel this way, most individuals, they want to grow and they want to be better. I don't know anybody that says, I don't want to grow. I just want to stay stagnant. Actually, that's not true. I know a couple people, <laughs> but most of them are hungry to learn. They're hungry to grow and they want to put their best foot forward. There is nothing worse. And I am totally guilty of this. I was an executive was I was 27 years old and I have done this in the past in my younger days. There's nothing worse than doing a performance review for somebody or providing somebody feedback and putting them on a pip or telling them that they're not doing well, but they've been completely blindsided because you haven't been giving consistent feedback and performance reviews along the way, right? Or somebody that gets fired because they're told that they're not delivering and they're not hitting outcomes, but nobody's been coaching them and mentoring along the way. There's nothing worse than that. So it's really important that as an organization, and this means that our leaders are gonna have to step up to the plate, that we are providing consistent feedback on a quarterly basis, performance reviews on a, on a quarterly basis, that's gonna help the team member understand what they're doing really, really well, how they're providing value to the organization, and also areas for growth and opportunities, right? That they can grow in. This again is gonna help provide loyalty to the organization and the team member is more than likely gonna invest more time and energy with the team. But here's the th other thing, beyond having just performance reviews, we wanna make sure that we're dripping feedback throughout the weeks, right? So naturally as human beings, and again, I am completely guilty of this, is that we look for the bad in people or we look for when they mess up and then that's what we provide the feedback in. But you and I know that there's probably a billion things that they're doing weekly that are great 
right? Maybe that email that they sent to a client that was so well written that really made the client feel good or made them feel happy. Awesome. Maybe that on a day-to-day -day basis, they are coaching and mentoring their team, or maybe they're having a really difficult conversation that's not normal for them, but they push themselves. All of those things are great opportunities for you to just say, hey, I saw you do that. Fantastic. Great work wonderful, wonderful, wonderful leadership I'm seeing in you. So don't forget that beyond the quarterly performance reviews, we also want to drip feedback. Okay. Positive feedback, not fake feedback, positive, authentic feedback. So that when you do give some of that constructive criticism or that feedback, they don't feel like they're not enough because they've been told about the great things that they're doing as well. There's been a ton of, if you're a client of ours, you've heard this before. There was actually three bodies of research that were done completely different, three completely different bodies of research, not related about feedback. One was within the workplace body of research done about feedback in the workplace was one was um, in a school, right? So amongst students and the third body of research was done with married couples and it showed across the board that when individuals got a five to one ratio, five positive to one negative ratio of feedback, that they performed better, they were more positive, and the marriage lasted longer, didn't lead to divorce. Now that doesn't mean that we want to create fake positive feedback. That doesn't mean that we want to just say, oh, you look great today. We really want to look at our team and identify what are the great things that they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis then I can let them know and remind them, Hey, keep doing that. I, I love that. Right. If you see something that they're doing that you love or that you want them to keep, that's a great opportunity for you to provide that positive feedback and say that email that you wrote to the client, that was a great email. Keep, keep that template because I really liked that. Then again, when you are ready to give some feedback that maybe is not so great, you've already let them know some of the awesome things that they're doing. Remember 83% of professionals, they struggle with self-confidence. So sometimes when they get feedback and all they hear is negative feedback, automatically their good brain is going to go to the, I'm not enough place. They're going to go into that mindset of like, I'm, I'm just not enough for this job. Like, why am I here? I'm not good enough. And then they leave. And remember today's, today's show is all about how do we help our team have staying power? staying power. Okay. It's easy to start something. It's much more difficult to stay, but we want to give them reasons to stay. Okay. So today's top three tips. Hi, Saha is that we want to set our team up for success. Make sure they have a ton of clarity that they have a mentor they can go to, that they know what they should be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. When they start with your company, that you're creating an experience once they, once they do start with the company, that there's experience happening, there's growth happening, there's development happening, and that you are providing consistent feedback and performance reviews so that they know how they're doing in the organization and that they can continue to accelerate and grow. And I'm going to give you a bonus tip. Okay. So that was three. I'm going to give you a bonus tip, you know, we understand it's very competitive and sometimes uh, people get poached from organizations or they're being offered maybe double the salary and you just can't compete with that. And we get that right. And it depends on the person's value. Some people will say this organization is so awesome. It feels great. Even if I get offered 30,000, I'm not going to jump because this is my value. This is what I care for. But we do understand that it's competitive. So being able to show the team member where they can grow in your company and like how they can accelerate is going to be important. Now we often hear from leaders. Yeah, but there is no next step financially, or there is no next step. Like they're at the top of that role in the company, right? Especially if we're talking about like middle management supervisor roles, or maybe even entry level. There's not a lot of like, once we get to the top of the organization, you and I both know, that it gets, it gets smaller, right? Usually an organization starts heavy at the bottom and then it gets smaller to the top and we're with the C-suite executive team. But I want to really encourage you to think more critically and more creatively. How could we provide opportunities of growth within the company that don't necessarily have to do with the job title or with financial compensation? How do we create opportunities for them to maybe lead a project? 
or to uh, practice intrapreneurship. Intrapreneurship is when individuals come together and they're basically like building a product or a business within a business already, right? So this is their opportunity to think creatively or opportunities for them to build initiatives like maybe ERG groups if you don't have them already or going out into the community and creating corporate social responsibility. So I really encourage you to think what are opportunities for growth and development even if you think that there's nowhere to go in the org chart or maybe financially there's nowhere to go, there's always opportunities for growth. You just have to think a little more creatively and critically to get your team to buy in and engage. So my friends, my name again is Natalina Nasruddin. I'm the CEO and I'm the founder of Rise Up For You and you are watching the Rise Up For You TV series. I'm going live every single week. We are launching a number of videos on YouTube, on our podcast so that you can be your best and so that your team can be your best. So if you haven't already, make sure you head over to Rise Up For You YouTube channel, click subscribe, and thank you to everyone. This week we hit over 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. So thank you for those of you that are subscribed into our community, we love you. Um, and also make sure you head over to any podcast platform, click subscribe to the Rise Up For You podcast. It's free content every single week so that you and your team can be your absolute best. Here at Rise Up For You, we're all about the entire person. So it's not only about helping you professionally get to the next level with soft skills, but remember soft skills, they cross over in a personal life too, right? The person is the professional and the professional is the person. And if, if you're a CEO and a business owner and you want to take your company and your team to the next level, investing in these soft skills is a non-negotiable. It's no, no, it's no longer extracurricular. It's no longer, well, we might have a little bit of budget, so let's do it. I can tell you now that the ROI and the growth that you will see when you invest in your team's leadership and their training and development can eight times fold over if you invest in your team. And if you're an individual contributor watching this, make sure that every single day you are putting your best foot forward because companies react to people and people react to companies. They all work together. Thanks again for joining me here at Rise Up For You. If you have questions, if you want to know more, um, please feel free to DM us, put a comment below and we will get back to you. But other than that, have an amazing day, make it great. And thanks for joining Rise Up For You today. Thank you.